All right, so we're in Nalbina. Now, this is one of the most interesting parts of the run right now. The next two bosses are Mandragoras and Ariman, and they are probably the most RNG intense bosses of the whole run. Skip a cutscene. And now we're just heading through the Moss Frame Highways. Okay, so let's spend a little time talking about the um, ATB filling, because we don't have anything to talk about right now. So the way this game works is that um, in order to save resources, only so many abilities can be used at the same time. Um, attacks, like attacks, melee attacks, those things, um, there's no limiting on them, but like magic and technics, all of them have effect capacities, and they require, um, they require resources to use. And so this game has eight slots, eight effect capacity slots that can be occupied at any given time in a battle. And every ability has some number of slots that it takes. So let's say you have one ability that requires eight slots. Um, nothing else can be happening at the same time as that ability. Or if you have two abilities that require four slots, you can use two of them, but nothing else can happen at the same time. Or you could do four, two, two, etc. So far this hasn't been a problem because arrow, for arrow or dark for example, are, um, are yeah, one, two, four, eight are the n possible numbers. Arrow and Dark both have effect capacities of 2, and so you can use 3 of them at the same time, no problem. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6, so all 6 of those fit in the effect, in the effect capacity, no problem, like against Belias. Um, this chest can have a, can have a headband worth um, 1250, or 1,200 gil, so I like to get it. Um, and so, until now it's not been a problem, because the highest effect capacity we've seen has been 2. But... Uh, after a little bit, we're going to start seeing abilities that require more slots, and if they require more slots, you can only use so many abilities at the same time. Exactly. As Alex says, Water Spout, which you saw killed killed the first attempt at Bergen, um, is, is 8. And so I tried to use an ability at the same time. Um, you can't do anything at the same time as Water Spout. Another one, for example, is Feral Strike, Brand's ability that you just used. That one requires... Um, nothing else will be happening at the same time. So if anyone's using a Phoenix down, you have to wait for that effect to clear, or um, or it can't it can't start the effect. That chest I get, just got is optional, but it can contain a pirate hat, which is worth two thousand gil. So I figured I'd show you where it was. So now we're just continuing forward out of the Mossfern High Waste and into the Salica Wood. So, here is the Salica Wood. Salica Wood is like sort of a calm spot between the Bergen and M Mandy's, but it is a place where you can make up LP that you missed earlier. So these are pumpkin heads, and each of them is worth a good amount of experience and one LP. But you have gold amulets on, so each one is worth two. And they're very easy to kill because they'll die to one Blazara with Glacial Staves and the new Mystic Armor. So while we're here, let's do the menu. So, we notice that um, we'll start with, say, we'll start over here. So the first thing we need to do is give Bosch and Vaughn mirror mail. So Bosch gets mirror mail right here. Vaughn needs the same licenses. So mirror mail on both of them. That's heavy armor six. Now the girls need licenses for the new armor they just got. So, Sorcerer's Habit is Mystic Armor 6, and Mystic Armor 6. Alright, that's good. Now, we're done, with the, we're done with the armor for pretty much the whole run now. Now, we gotta go up and give the girls the abilities they need for the next part. The most important things here um, depend on what you want to do. So, Reflect will not last long enough for the next boss, Ariman. So if you have a lot of gill, or if, if you want to get Spellbound, which is this license, um, right, Spellbound, it makes things last 50% longer. So we're, if something lasts 60 seconds, it now lasts 90 seconds when you get this license. However, if you have, um, if you have a lot of extra gill, like if you have 8,500 extra gill, instead of getting Spellbound, you can get this license for the Ruby Ring. That's a little bit different. 
Um, but for now, I'm just going to be showing what to do with no ruby rings, and then you can improvise no ruby ring strategies, and you just get the, this ruby ring license instead of the um, swiftness and spellbound licenses. But for now, I'm just going to get swiftness and spellbound. And then headsman, swiftness, and spellbound. That's the most important thing for these girls right now. And you also, for the boss after Mandy's, you want to have War Mage, which is to the left here. You absolutely need War Mage for Ariman. So Penelope gets War Mage. Ash does not have enough LP for it right now. But the reason she needed 220 was that she she gets 50 LP from the Mandy's, and she needs 60 for this. So she'll get enough for Spellbound just by, you know, from the Mandy's. So, or, yeah, for, uh, for War Mage after the Mandy's. So there's that. And then the other part of this menu is to give Bosch this license right here, which is Green Magic 1. You can either go up and to the left, which costs 20 less LP, so if you're short on LP, you go this way. I like going left and then up, sorry, left and then up, which costs 20 more LP, but it gives Bosch 50 extra, L 50 extra MP, which is nice. And then now while your curse is here, it's useful to give Balthier Green Magic 3. This is so that he has Sleep. Sleep, which is needed for a boss in the Pharos for Fenrir. We'll get there eventually. And then also, you want to give Fran Confuse, which you need for Daedalus, which is a boss coming up uh, in Gear of Vagan. So you give her Confuse. And then after this, you spend the rest of her MP go or LP going this way, towards her final Quickening slot, which she does not have enough, enough for right now, but that's fine. We can get this later. And then finally... Give Bosch, since we're here, give him Belias. Um, he needs Belias to open a door to get into Gear of Vagan. And so I like to get this now. Um, so that's all good. And we should be ready to go. Um, that covers all the licenses for now. Um, give both the girls, optimize them both. It gives them the armor we just got. And now they're set up basically for the rest of the run. And now we can head on. Alright, so now I want to show you how to pumpkin head farm in case you need extra LP, extra LP. If you missed LP from a boss or you didn't get enough from jellies, what you can do is you can use Blazara on the pumpkin heads, like so. So it's not always enough, so just have both girls cast Blazara. Right? You can do this while running, and you can get extra LP from that and experience. As long as you do it while running, you don't waste too much time doing that, and so it's faster than doing an extra round of jellies. Especially if there's some that are asleep, you can just do that, keep running. So you got two, got eight extra LP just then. Um, just right here to the left, right in this corner, there's a chest that can contain bone mail. If you see that, grab it. Um, that's like 2,000, 3,000 extra gil. It's pretty nice. Now, here is our next Traveler spot. Cast Traveler on one of these pumpkin heads. And something I like to do is cast Lazara also, just to kill them. Because why not? So, 917 is our Traveler number. So that's how little time... Pumpkinhead farming can take. It's very little, gets you a lot of extra LP. So you got 12 extra LP there. So Ash, instead of having 8, has 20. So that's pretty nice. Do a little, uh, a little immobilized warp here. Thank you, Alec. Um, with that traveler spot, you have about 50 or so extra steps. With, with good movement. So now we're just doing a little bit of Moogle hide and seek. Um, we're trying to find the Moogles for the for the Moogle boss that we just talked to in order to get through the gate, in order to get to the Fawn Coast. Um, this little mini game, you can't complete it before you beat Bergen, and so that's sort of like the thing that stops you from going further and continuing the plot.
Ah, yes, and as you, as Alec mentioned on the couch at RPG Limit Break, super chill music here, very relaxing. This part is uh, sort of the calm between the storms, or the, the eye of the hurricane, because you got Bergen before and you got Mandy's, which is the most random fight in the game afterwards. So... Here I like to swap back to Bosch, just because you want Bosch to be your party leader. Oh, not RPG Limit Break, at NASA. North American Speedrunners Assembly. Sorry. Yeah. Running this game can be pretty pretty stressful, so anytime you can find a relax is nice. It's funny, the uh, this music is is Alex's favorite and uh, the Fawn Coast is one of my favorites, so talk to this Moogle boss. Oh yeah, Kyo, just so you can see, this is the one you want to go to first to save steps. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention that, Kyo. That was until um, the last segmented run by Yokai, the place everyone did, Traveler. Oh, Freda likes Fonkos too? Good taste. So now we're going to go up and turn left this time. There's a chest here that can have an ether in it, if you want that. Um, the next few bosses are the place where ether can be really important. Um, Ariman especially. It's easy to run out of MP. So I'm going to show you right now the mobile crit down. So as I mentioned earlier, you want about 45 or 40, you want about 46 magic to do the crit down. So Pinello with no weapon and the mage's hat gives you the perfect amount of magic for this crit down. And so the way you would do this is have um, Ash cure herself or use an item. So if you have like an extra potion, you could use um, like use a potion. You just want her to stand still. And then Pinello is going to cast Fyra or Blizzara on Ash. Right? And then you can run away. So you see Pinello is casting on Ash and Ash is standing still. And that puts both the girls in critical. The reason it's good to do it here is that you see right now Pinello is regaining MP. So you get more MP for Sochin Cave Palace, which is coming up. And there's nothing dangerous that can attack you here. So it's a good place to do it. MP is very is very important for the next bit. So much so that Eminon uses another strategy to double Pinello's MP, but we get by without that doubling. Um, okay, so up here, um, you'll see sometimes, actually more often than not, right in front of where that guy is, a chest spawns, which has uh, possibly a high ether in it. And the high ether is pretty awesome. It replaces an elixir. So if you get it, it's very nice. Yeah, that zone had no hostile enemies. So just talk to these last two Moogles. Looks like I might get hit by this guy though, so I might uh, have to redo the crit down. Well, I'll redo it anyway to show you what is another way of possibly doing it. Yeah, rip. Rip Pinello. Yeah, Eminon, um... The old... Eminon did a lot of things from the old route. Actually, it's kind of funny. The, um... The setup between from the Leviathan to Belias is something that was copied from Eminon, but Eminon wasn't using it for the reason I did it. I did it and I copied it from him because it requires way less LP. He just did it because he thought I was faster. So it's kind of funny. Um, this guy you can talk to for 400 gil in the form of Quasimodo boots, but I'm okay on gil so I'm not going to use it right now. Let's skip a cutscene and now we're at the Fawn Ghost. If you want to, you can take a take a save, touch the save crystal. If you messed up something in this Lake of Wood, something went wrong, you can always recast Traveler right here on this wolf. That's the second Traveler spot. Uh, but then, but there you have you have more like 100 to 150 places to burn steps. Or, like, 150 steps to burn, and so it's slower. That's why you wouldn't want to do that. 
if you critted the girls, you would want to have them reflect themselves here, and then put them away. Um, but since Pinello died, I'm going to do, redo the crit down later on. Yeah, 100 to 150. Well, I found that it's it's even more than that when you get two Mandy's. Like 100 to 150 is how much you have to burn before leaving for Mandy's. So 917 was my uh, was my traveler number, and when I get to the spot before Mandy's, um, I'm gonna want about my traveler number minus skip a cutscene minus 540 steps or 550 steps to burn between the save point and Mandy's. So for 917, that's like what? 370? So 370 is the step number I'm going to be looking for. Now here is the next shop. Um, go up, up to get Mirror Mail and equip it to Bosch. Uh, you can equip it to Bosch or Vaughn, however you want to do it. I like doing it with Bosch. If you have the money, you can buy a Ruby Ring. And then you have to buy Bio, Dispel, and Death. Um, and then if you're short on Phoenix Downs, here is a place you can buy some or High Potions. And you also want to make sure to have a few remedies. So to make sure you have enough money, you want to make sure you have 12,400 gil after this menu. I don't have that, but that's okay, because I have a Mega Lick so I can sell later um, if I need to. But you only need that gil in Arcades. So for now, 6,000 is fine. We'll get by. Yeah, I'm going to go over, mul I'm gonna go over multiple Mandy strats, and I'm going to talk about what to do with the ones you don't kill. So, boost away, and we're gonna head to the Cheetop Lands, save Crystal. A rogue menu is wrecked, but if you're short on money, this is what has to happen, so it's okay. So the next fight that's coming up is Mandragoras, and this is one of the most RNG intense fights of the game. Each Mandy has a little bit less, or starts with a little bit less than the total amount of H damage Traveler does, and so, and they, they all, all five of the Mandragoras run around randomly, and let's get the cutscene. Um, you can, <laughs> you can if you can group them all together, you can kill them all with Traveler. But since they move around randomly, and they tend to not behave nicely most of the time, you have to find some way... You have to kill as many as you can with Traveler, and then get the rest with Blazara. So, um, the first phase of the fight is managing your steps and trying to get close to them while they're all grouped up, or as many of them grouped up as possible. So let's actually make a save point. Yeah. Crystals for Life was before Traveler Strats, and it was a complete disaster. So when you get to this this place, you get off your Chocobo, spam X, talk to this kid. Mandragoras. So touch the crystal. So now, now that Bosch has Mirror Mail on, um, let's see, 300, so what I said I was looking for is like 340, so we're good. Don't have to burn any steps. So now that um, Bosch has Mirror Mail, um, he has Reflect permanently, and so Pinello can just cast Blazara on Ash. You have to use Blazara here, and a Flame Staff or a Cherry Staff if, if that worked with your damage down. For me, no weapon, so it's okay. You have to use Blazara because Fire does extra damage at this point in the game. So use Blazara. Get them both critical, and then turn on their gambits to reflect. Turn off their gambits so they don't target themselves. Remove them from the party. Put the battle speed on slow because you're about to run by a bunch of fiends. And now let's make a save state here, just in case. 
Save state three. All right, now let's go. Yeah, so that that waiting for animations is something I want to show. And that's something I think, actually, you might be able to learn a load about Kyo. We'll see. Just last time I saw you fight, fought them, you made the mistake a few times, so I'll show you. There's a cutscene skip here. Sorry. Front of the store. Alright, now let's make a safe day here as well. So, the battle speed is slowest. We're going to leave it at that because it limits the um, number of actions the Mandy's get. So, make another safe state. Save state 4. Now let's check our steps. 917 is our number, so we have about 80 steps to burn here. So we're going to run around, and now they, they break up, and they all, after running in random directions, they all gather in one corner. So a perfect fight involves following them to that corner and trying to hit them with the hit them with the indubitably. Let's see what we get. So they're coming at me right like this. So now I'm gonna run away from them, try and get them to gather up as they come towards me. So they're not behaving this time, but I think I can get four. So we wanna wait until my steps are at 907 to 916 and then hit them. Let's see if I can get four. So 907. Now we turn around. Boom, 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 boom. So we got four. So that was really good. So that was that was a really great start to the fight. The only one that's left is this guy. So he's using ram. That's not the move I want to show. So let's let's just get rammed. See if he uses the move I want him to use. So scream. Scream is the worst attack they do. It's area of effect and it hits every and it does damage to everyone, so it will just kill the girls, right? And so if so if you bring out the girls before the animation starts, they will just die unless they block it. It has a pretty high block chance, but um, they'll just die. So what you do is you wait, boom, the animation has started. Now that the animation has started, they are safe. Um, and so you can bring out the girls, battle speed fast. Turn on their gambits. Oh, you should probably optimize Penelo. And then, boom, he's dead. You see action? Action is there, which means the targets have been decided. And even though he's running away, he's still going to hit by all the spells. And he's going to die. So, that was a pretty good Mandragoras, right? Now let's try again. Let's make something worse happen. something worse. So here's something you could do, actually. What you could do is you could use- Balthier can also use Traveler, so let's try this. Oh, this is not good. Yeah. Alright, so let's- this is too bad. Let's try something a little bit in between. So this is the other strategy that um, Alec was talking about. So let's run away. What you can actually do is use Vaughn and Balthier. Give Vaughn the mirror mail so we can take a few more hits. Actually lead with Balthier. Here's what you can do. You can target one of the Mandys. You can always reach it, you can always change this target, but you can charge Traveler before the Mandys even start doing anything. So you burn your steps. Now your steps are good, and you can swap to Vaughn, and he will run away. Well, he should have, but <laughs> didn't quite work. Um, this is this is why the fight is ridiculous because so many random things can happen. Like you just saw, I got a good fight, but then something random happened, and like some of them stood back, and weird shit can happen. 
But let's just try something else. Let's run this way and see what happens. I'm bringing someone else in. But as I run up... Okay, we're at a good traveler number now, so... He'll run away. Right? And he'll cast Traveler for me. Okay, that was pretty bad. Perfect. Let's try it. Wait, so, so now... That was a pretty bad... Only one person got hit. And this kind of thing will happen when you do, tr when you do Mandy's. So here's where you have to learn what to do. So this is a, this is a good thing that happens. You want to be near one at a time. So do like what I showed before. Try and just kill the one. Forgot to equip... Let's see, let's see if we can kill just this one guy. Okay, yeah, this is this is just awful. I'm just gonna restart. <laughs> so yeah, you have to figure out. This is just thing you have to practice over and over again. It's gonna be it's gonna be terrible. It's gonna suck, but you have to just learn to deal with different things that can happen. You should learn the, the elemental weaknesses of all the different Mandys. Like, uh, the Mandragora Prince is weak to fire. Alright, there we go. This is good. So we got we got three this time, right? Did something different, got a little different result. And now you can just do the same process before. You want always want to just try and isolate them. Right, Pollen is area of effect. So you wait for Pollen animation to start. Then you can bring in the girls. Speed of the battle speed. Make sure Pinello is equipped. Right, that, poison, sleep, slow, all of that will happen to the girls if you don't wait for the animation to start. I did an ATB reset to cancel them targeting themselves. And now we're good to go. Kill the last one. Yo, Pitted, how's it going, man? Wait for this guy. Right, he's, he's just not doing a normal attack, so we do the thing. Bring them out. Gambit's on. Gambit's off. See, if if Scream was gonna hit, it would suck, but he should die before. And boom. Alright, fight's over, we're good. And now we have to do the final part of this menu, which is give Ash channeling and swiftness or and uh, War Mage. This is really important for Ariman. And we're ready to go. Um, if you have an antidote, I would say use it. Um, I don't have one, so I'll just let the poison do its damage. Actually, I bought extra remedies. I'll use a remedy. Oh yeah, I put it. I was watching your uh, PB and I didn't see that. Maybe you should try that in your PB. But yeah, the idea behind the other strat that Alake is talking about is you can you can party leader swap and leave the person who's targeting the Mandy's as not party leader, and if you're close enough, they will run up and cast Traveler. So you can party leader swap, and then they'll run up. And when not, the only steps that count are the steps that are the steps the party leader uses. <laughs> I see, Pitted. I see. Oh, do you know why Gabronth went so poorly yesterday? By the way. Uh, so the next traveler spot is in this room. You can either cast it with um, Bosch, or you can cast it with Balthier. It's a little bit safer to cast it with Balthier, so that's what I'm going to do. Just have Balthier target one of the dudes through the door, let his thing charge a little bit, and then uh, move through.
182 is my traveler number. Turn the battle speed down. Put it in the chat. This is a habit I have, is to always put the traveler number in the chat. This kind of stuff is why you want mirror mail and why it's so important. You wouldn't be able to survive all these attacks if you didn't have such good armor, so it really helps a lot. And later on, magic will reflect off of you as well. So. This chest over here can have a pirate's or uh, officer's cap in it, officer's hat, or a high potion. And the officer's hat is worth like 3,500 gil, so if you get it, it's a nice little uh, little amount of gil that you get there. Alright, now let's continue on. Use high potions as needed. You'll probably need about 5 or 6 high potions for Ari men, and 2 or 3 for Sid, depending on how, how well it goes or how poorly. Maybe 4 or 5. You want to have around 10 here, I would say. Run up to this door. Flee away. Oh, you used to buy an officer's hat for Bosch? Nice. These guys always turn around right about here. So now this gives you time to prep for Ariman. So here comes Ariman. Battle speed fast, and take off bon Bosch's armor. And now you this is what you want to do. You want to do... Protect. Um, you can do Protect during Ariman, but it's it's a little bit dangerous, and if you're just starting, I would say just do Protect, Reflect, Cure. Or Protect and Decoy Cure, sorry. Once you see Lure and Protect appear, you can remove the girls, optimize Bosch, and you're good to go. And now we have Ariman. Now. Alright, system save state four. And so now we're at the point where we're actually using ATB weight because the bosses are getting a little bit tougher. So, save state four. This is arguably, some will say, as Pitted says, the hardest boss in the game. He's tough. Um, if things go well, he's not that bad, but things, strange things can happen, and will happen. So let's give it a shot. So, first part of this boss is easy. Run up to him, bring the girls out, and turn on all your gambits. Girls will start doing damage, and Bosch will steal. Um, so, one thing you have to keep in mind is you always want to keep your characters close enough together that all the, re all the reflected magic will hit um, all the party. So if Ash is casting on herself, the entire party has to be within the circle that you see, right? Same thing goes for Pinello. So you want to keep Bosch within range of the girls, right? But the other thing that's weird about him is he has a move called Phantasmal Gaze, which causes um, Confuse on, on everything within range. But the thing about Phantasmal Gaze is it's an um, area of effect that's not a, it's not a circle, it's a triangle. It's a triangle like if you look at the, the minimap in the top right corner, it's in a shape like that. So if he's looking towards Bosch, and he only sees Bosch right now, he doesn't see the girls. So if he uses Phantasmal Gaze, he can o it will only confuse Bosch. It won't confuse the girl. So that's why you want to keep him. You want to keep Ariman in the middle of the girls and Bosch, and let them do damage. Pinch of Death Powder, and then you can turn off his Gambit. Toxify his area of effect magic doesn't do anything because he reflects back at him. So now we are at the point where he's going to divide. So this is why the, bo the boss is tough. As soon as you see, so he's got his arms out. As soon as you see one of his arms start to move, you're gonna wanna. You'll see it in a moment. When he's below 60% health, that's when it happens. So, let's. There we go. One of his arms started to move up, and now he is. Um, he's teleporting, and he's gonna go divide into two copies. So what you wanna do is you wanna do decoy, and cure. And so here, there's two things you need to know. So if the girls were in the middle of an action, after queuing Decoy and Cure, you need to ATB reset them. And then what an ATB reset would look like for this fight is go into the menu immediately, and then equip and remove Pinello's armor, 
Ash's armor, Bosch's armor, and then go back into the game. Um, but you see, that canceled the actions I already cured, or I already queued. So you only do that if they were in the middle of Blizzara. So if they weren't, you don't have to do that ATB reset on them. So decoy and cure. You really want to have these uh, these abilities cured or queued while he's teleporting. If he is already teleported, then then there's a chance that he actually will get back and accidentally target one of the girls. So this is why earlier I mentioned that if a part if if somebody is in range, they will be targeted. Um, the the clones can teleport back and might not be in range, or Bosch might not be in range for the clones, and so the clones can target the girls. So that's why you want to do this action, and you want to remove them from the party as soon as possible. So, like, save state, I'll make a save state to show. Save state, or... So what you want to do now is equip, 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 remove them from the party, and now you're ready to go. And you want to run over this direction. And they come back, and they, they both target Bosch. Now what can happen is, if, in, if you don't do this correctly, is... Let's say you, they're not targeting anything, and you're like, Oh, it took a little bit longer! Shoot! Running over... Okay, well I got lucky this time and only Bosch got targeted, but when they teleport back, they can target the girls. It didn't happen this time, but it can happen, and it sucks when it does. Okay, so... Alright, we're good. Moving from the party. ATB reset. All three of them are got their armor back on. Run in this direction. So now, this is the second phase. The second phase... Now, some people like to cast Protect on the real Ariman. I personally don't like to um, do that, because I can just see the difference. The key here is to know which Ariman is the real one. The real one is the one with the Shimmer. You see, the one on the left, as you move the camera around, he looks solid. The one on the right, however, Shimmers. You see that effect? And so that's how you know which one is the real one. Um, so, what you do is you run in the middle, and you put the girls closer to the real one. And you put Bosch closer to the fake one. What this does is it causes the reflected magic, the the girls will reflect their magic at the real one, and they will reflect the Bosch the, the Bosch's magic will reflect at the fake one. So you'll hit both, but most of the bad magic or most of the damage will hit the real one. Um, you only have to hit, hit with one spell in order to kill the fake one. So you'll see reflect reflect two hit two hit the real one. Two hit the fake one, two hit the real one. So most of the damage went to the real one, and the fake one died. See? Oh, he's lifting his arm. That means he's below 40% HP. So 40% is when his next division is. So let's... And the Blizzards are here. So Q, decoy, Q, cure, cure, Q, cure, and then ATB reset. You have to remove Mirror Mail. And removing Mirror Mail allows decoy and Blizzard... Or, sorry, decoy and... Oh, what? Decoy and Cure to hit. So Decoy, Cure. And now, as soon as the animation closes for Decoy and it's completely gone, that means it's landed and you can remove Ash from the party. You can't take her out before that or it cancels Decoy. So take them out, put their armor back on, and now you're good to go for the second phase, or third phase. Get that item and get this one. These are both uh, really nice. This one is either a Gaia Hat or an Elixir, the other one is a Guaranteed Elixir. Gaia Hat's worth 3,500 gil, so that really helps. Okay, so now the two divided into four. Now we have four copies, and you can see the one that's closest to Bosch is the real one. Right? And as I mentioned before, if you want, you can cast Protect on the real copy, and you can tell by looking at whether or not he has Protect whether he's the real one. So now we bring the girls in. And you want, for the way I do it, I like having Ash cast Blazara as area of effect. You see it should hit all four, and it will kill all of the clones. Um, so I have her reflect, and then I don't have Penella do it because it's only, only one copy is needed anyway, and I want Ash to get the kills. The real one is teleporting, which means he won't take damage. But that's fine, because the clones will die still. Dead, dead, dead. So now all the clones are dead. Right? And now it's just the real one. And use high potions as necessary. It'll happen. Okay, some more Blizzaras. He's once he gets below 20%, there's his teleport. You see him lifting his arm again. And now we do the rinse and repeat. Decoy. Cure. 
Boom, boom, boom. Now for the final one, we want to bring in Vaughn. And we're going to put... We're going to optimize Vaughn. That'll give him the Flame Staff and the Mirror Mail. And we're going to put the Battle Speed on Slow. The reason we bring in Vaughn is it takes a long time for all of this... For him to multiply into 8 this time. So he multiplies into 2, 4, 8. Um, it takes longer, and so Decoy will wear off if we use Bosch. So we're going to use Vaughn to gather the clones. And he's just basically going to be a sacrificial lamb. So let's wait for them to appear. One thing you can do in the meantime that's nice about this optimization is Bosch, or Vaughn has Fyra and a Flame Staff, which is enough to kill clones. And so you can wait for a few to appear, and then try casting Fyra. So this is the real one here. I like casting on the real one because any extra damage is nice too. Or, so that's 400 damage to the one clone dead. So I killed one clone and did 400 damage while Vaughn was alive. Right? So now, let's sit, make a save state and see if something... We can we can make some crazy shit happen. So save state. Um, that helps because the clones all do attacks. They attack, they do Phantasmal Gaze, they do Doom, and just shit... They, they, can, they, can, do, they can wreck you really fast. It take, only takes like 9 or 10 attacks to kill Bosch from full health, and so if there's 7 copies doing attacks, you can die really fast. So you want to make sure all of the clones are attacking Bosch. Um, right now I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Uh, I can only see 6. There might be another one somewhere. Hopefully not. Hopefully I actually killed 2. Um, but, so now to finish him off, you want to bring in the girls, and hope he doesn't use Phantasmal Gaze. So... Just like before, we're going to do an area of effect, Blazara, and now Pinello is also going to do one, because you want to really go ham on the clones. Battle speed back on fast. You see how fast his HP is going down. Kill the clones. Oh, here we go. Alright, now everyone's confused. Actually, no, I think he's... He might actually just die, but ever, this is this is Phantasmal Gaze, um, and it sucks. This is the reason the fight sucks. Everyone's confused, and just things are messy. So, I don't think I'm gonna really get through this fight showing you the actually how bad Phantasmal Gaze is, is, but I can I can show you what you have to do. So what you have to do is you have to remove the weapon of everyone that is confused. Oops, I actually forgot to put their armor back on. So remove everyone's weapon, and now they can only use fists. And with their current armor, they can't do damage. And attacks remove... Um, so he's no longer confused. So that attack removed confused. She's still confused, but I turned on Bosch's Gambit, and now he'll use a Smelling Salt. Right? The Smelling Salt will cure Ash. And now I can give her a weapon and have her start casting magic with her Gambit. Um, and I can also ATB reset. So right now, Bosch is waiting because he just used the Smelling Salt. If I ATB reset him, or just give him his weapon back, he'll be ready to use a new thing. Right? New Smelling Salt. Um, so now, Ash is actually killing Blazara, and that will kill him. So that, this fight actually ended up going pretty well. But that's what you have to do. You have to use Bosch, Bosch's Gambits to throw Smelling Salts, to remove weapons of anyone who, who's confused, and that's really all there is to it. Um, if they have if they have their weapons on, they can kill each other and do damage to Bosch. Same thing, Bosch can kill the girls. It's just it gets really messy. Um, and one other thing that I didn't point out is that this is one of the fights that we got Jack Boots for. Um, he has an ability called Immobilizega, or Immobilizega. I'm not sure what you, how it's pronounced, but you want to give Bosch Jack Boots if you see him using it. And when you're first learning, just give him Jack Boots and leave them on for the whole fight. So the fight would normally look like this, and this would be part of the check the checklist for the fight. But, um, but um, yeah, for, at the end of the fight, you want to put the golden emote back on him so he gets full LP. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect fight. So that's the other problem with this fight is Mazerai. Mazerai does uh, enough damage to just wipe Bosch off the face of the earth, and he can only do it when there's no more clones left. And so that's how the fight ended. Um, that really sucks. Um, let's try and do it one more time. I'll actually drop a save state here. Save state 5. Load state 4. I, I do want to show what happens when that happens, but... 
Remove all, optimize, optimize, optimize. Don't forget Mirror Mail. Lazara, the real one, Lazara, some other one. Let's put on the Jack Boots just to be safe. Battle speed fast. Use high potions as necessary. Here's one place where it's good to use ethers. Um, if you have any extra ethers, people can run out of MP here. So you can have Bosch use an ether on on Ash. Once again, Mazerai. It doesn't always kill him, though, so you can always just high potion. And there you go. That's what the fight should look like. The last phase gets really messy because of Mazerai and all the clones. All the clones can use Phantasmal Gaze. They can all use terrible abilities, Immobilize Ga, Melee, etc. And that's what it should look like. That's Ariman. And that's the so Mandy's and Ariman are two of the fights that require the most practice, I would say. Oh, Bosch is confused. Remove his weapon because he's confused. Have one of the girls hit him. He missed himself. Okay, so that's Ariman in a nutshell. Now moving on. Um, this next hallway is extremely dangerous, and it takes about 45 seconds to get through. So if, you're, if your Doom counter, which takes 10 seconds per tick, is below 4, is that 4 or below, it could be dangerous getting through this hallway. So you might have to kill Bosch and bring him back to life to make sure he doesn't have Doom. But other than that, you need to use a float mode to avoid the traps. And I would recommend using a potion too. Put the battle speed on slowest as well. My Doom counter is at 6, so I can make it all the way through, no problem. Now don't take this hallway lightly, because it has ended several runs. I've seen at least 4 or 5 runs die. Someone was relieved to make it through Ariman, and then they got into this hallway and died. So, be very careful. If any of the main characters die, and you have to bring someone else out without float, the traps will mess you up. He started at 6, and now he's down to 2. That's about the 40 seconds it takes to get up the hallway. Now we can move on. Oh, did I? Okay, we got that. Push this button, and we're in Arcades. Alright, so, now we're to Chops. Skip a cutscene. Back into non-combat. If you need to restock on high potions, wait for that Benga guy to spawn, and then uh, buy stuff from him. On your way... In, talk to this guy, the lucky man. If you forget talking to him, it's a pretty big time loss because you have to go back and it ruins your step count, which is fixed from before Ariman. Um, and that actually happened in one of my previous world records in my, my 626 run, and it was very annoying. Oh, Seek, not a Benga. Sorry, thank you. I should have known that. So we give this guy 1,500 gil. Thanks, Jules. Run back. Talk to a guy who knows about the bag of coins. Back this way. Talk to Jules, who appears. Thanks, 
Mr. Wolves. This is the last great, um, last great uh, X spam. You gotta mash a lot from here. Um, another cutscene skip there. Some more mashing. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, Alec. Alright. I just passed the magic shop where you buy a Roga, but I personally like to run up here first, because you have to give 2,500 gil this to Jules, who walks up here. And um, if you buy a Roga and accidentally sa don't save the gil, it'll kill your step count, and it's really frustrating. So now we're on chops. So chops is fun. Um, it's all about connecting different pairs of Arcadian people together. So the first one I like to get is the senior researcher. She's usually somewhere in this area, and she's the woman with the gray shirt. So I see her right here. This is the senior researcher. So I go talk to her. Now after talking to her, I talk to the failed researcher, who is a similar looking person, person who is a man, and he's over this way. Right, failed researcher. And now there's a guy over here. This is the gentleman onlooker. Talk to him, and then the eagle crier who's running around in gray. Okay, the or the the. This girl runs up. She's the talented woman. And now you go over here, run up the stairs, and talk to the old guy. Down here, there's a guy in yellow. They look alike. There's two of this guy. They both look alike. Surprise, surprise. So, look alike A, look alike B. The other nice thing about coming to the magic shop now is that um, it resets the positions of the NPCs, and so you get more consistent positions when you're doing chops. Talented woman is bay. So here is the last gill choke or like threshold that you have to reach, which you have to you have to spend six thousand eight hundred gill on eroga. So you have to sell things that you don't need until you have enough for eroga. So I don't need the death powder. I'm gonna sell that. I got the um, Gaia hat, so I can sell that. Um, and I don't really need the light woven shirt, kill and weave, or pony hat anymore. Or even really the shielded armor, but I'm not going to sell it just because I don't want to. Um, but, I'm going to keep it just because I, just in case. I have enough for a Roga. Now I'm only so short on Gil because I really cut jellies short. Um, didn't really have that, didn't have that much money. When you're doing your first runs, you should do more jellies and make sure you have more Gil than this. Because this is really low. This is really as low as it goes. Now talk to the proud mother. Behind is the tutor. He should usually be right here. Oop. Now head down. Talk to the poor husband. <laughs> look alike and look be like. Poor poor wife. Now we talk to the uh, Spiring Starlet, the woman in purple, yeah. Faded Star is the woman in green. Talk to the researcher, determined researcher. Um, and then talk to this old guy. And then finally, there's two possibilities here. You can either talk to this guy with yellow hair, um, the worried husband, or if you see also the athletic woman, you can talk to either of them. And either of their follow-ups are over here. The worried husband matches with the materialistic woman, and the athletic research, the athletic woman matches with uh, this guy in gray over here, who is the um, avid reader. 
and then talk to this guy, and you've done chops. Yeah, it's tight for steps, but um, the route I just used is pretty loose. Like, I'm going to have plenty of steps when I get to Sid. That'll be no problem. Yeah, only sometimes have I gotten the athletic woman. It's pretty rare. I usually use the uh, worried husband. Now I just continue the plot stuff. Simple enough. So before Still Shrine, I mentioned, or before the last two sets of license venues, I mentioned what the most important things were. Um, decoy and oil are really the most important things for Still Shrine. Um, spellbound, you need to reflect to last through all of RE men is really important. And also, um, War Mage gives the girls MP during those fights. Um, if you don't have Spellbound, you'll, your reflect will probably wear out sometime during Sochin Cave Palace. Um, and if you don't have War Mage, your girls will run out of MP at some point during the RE men fight, almost for sure. So, those are the most important things. The next part, there's only one thing... Oh, that's... So what I did, I just hit the wrong version. This is a minute and ten second time loss. Um, it happens. Just make sure you don't do that. That's why you don't do a tutorial. While actually doing a rail speed run. So you have to go back to Cenoble. Just wanted a water break. You know where to go. Mash some more text, skip a cutscene, and we're in Draclor. Skip a text box. So the way I like to do this is the battle speed's on slow still. I like to remove Bosch's armor and give him protect. Because this laboratory can be really dangerous. Right around here. It gets dangerous right after touching this door. So, put his armor back on. What was my step number? Skip a cutscene and three text boxes. 182. So now this is just follow the map. Um, you don't have the mini map, but you just gotta open this door. I'll sort of talk my talk my way through it. Push, push this button. All these rooms have one button you have to push. It changes the positions of the bulkheads and lets you navigate through the laboratory. Now here's the first place where things get weird. This elevator can open up, like perfect, I'm glad. It can open up and guys can come out. And it gets really annoying because you have to wait, just wait for the guys to come out of the elevator and just take damage and wait and wait. And now the girls are in Spellbreaker, perfect. TAS boys. You gotta wait for the button, wait for the door to close, and then the button will appear. That's the elevator troll. It's like 20 or 30 seconds lost. Turn left. Right around this corner is the next door. I did want to show what uh, was needed, or, like what you need to do when that happens. Because if they, and, you know, if no one ever saw it, open the bulkhead. We're gonna turn left outside this door. If you ever need an extra heal, you can remove his armor, 
and throw a cure in from the girls. I mean, my, uh, my jellies and dusty luck was okay. Like, Dustio was pretty good, but Jellies was just okay. I got, what, 43 and 79, so 120. Yeah, no, it's not that great, actually. What is that, 122 liquids in 12 rounds? That's not that great. I just cut it really short. Turn left, edit this way. I think it was 43. Yeah, it was 43 and like 80 something. Uh, Magicite. Yeah, that's the whole point of cutting all the gill. Now finally we hit this elevator. I'm not sure whether it's possible for this elevator to troll. I could have sworn it happened to me once, but then Zero said, does it ever happen? And it hasn't happened to me for a long time. Skip a cutscene, and now we reach a save point. Which is pretty nice. So 180 is my step. 182 is my step. So I have 40 extra steps here. Um, so yeah, now battle speed fast, and now we reach the point where you have to decide which ones are most, um, which lessons are most important. So what you need for this fight is just bio. So Black Magic Four on Ash and Pinello. Everything else is is nice, but not important. Not not necessary. Um, if you got the ruby ring on either girl, girl earlier, because you got a ruby ring instead of spellbound, I would recommend getting swiftness now to make this fight a little bit safer. Other than that, um, you could, if you wanted to, you could get channeling. Um, it's not super important. I just buy black magic um, for for both girls, and then if Bosch has the LP, I get potion lore three, because the next few fights give him enough LP for the licenses he needs, and potion lore three is just nice to have. It, it makes high potions heal for more. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to do now. You need to change the gambits. You need Blizzara for later, but for now we can put Bio on both girls. So Bio, Ally Ash, Bio. Alright. And now we gotta do a crit down. So like, like we saw before, 46 MP or magic is perfect. So have Pinello cast Fyra or Blizzara on the party. Um, the way I like to have it is I like to have 40 steps to burn from being at the crystal. Right, she's cast Fyra. Can remove the mirror mail and buff for the fight. So the buffs for the fight are protect and decoy. Right, keep burning steps till you're about 40 short. So 142 is all I'm looking for. Turn the girl's gambits on to get reflect. Or now we're probably good. 143 is good. Boom. So mirror mail with decoy protect. Um, and then reflect on both girls. Optimize glacial staves on both. Bio gambits on both. Gambits on. And now we're ready for Sid. make a save state. Save state. Alright, cool. Let's try out Sid.
Alright, so positioning for Sid. The goal for this fight, he has four rooks surrounding him. You have to kill the rooks and then you kill Sid. You have to kill one rook for the first phase of the fight, and then the next phase of the fight will be killing the rest. So what you need is you need two sets of bios to kill one rook. It's possible to get damage rolled and I'll show you how to, how to deal with that, but the way to position for this fight that I find works best is... Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Move Bosch forward a little bit, and then have him attack himself. And now swap party leaders to Ash, and then move her up, and then move Penella over so that all three of them are in a line pointing towards Sid. Or as close to that as, po as you possibly can. And then swap back to Bosch, and before he attacks himself, high potion. So now if all goes according to plan, um, he, they, the, reflect sh the reflected bio should all hit this rook. Because that rook is closest to the everyone in the party. So let's see how he did. Alright, perfect. So all of them are hitting the rook. It's possible to get damage rolled, so what you want to do is target that rook with a, with a spare bio, just in case you get damage rolled. So let's see what happens. So didn't get the damage roll, rook died, we're good. So that was, that was a great first phase. I'm going to finish the fight just to show you what, what to do in the case of a really good first fight. First part, so what you want to do is start with giving Bosch a high potion, because he needs to be in full health for this part. Have both girls cast Bio. Now you want to cast Bio manually on Rook C if it's alive, or D. So Rook, Rook D, Bio, Rook D, alright? And then once you see action for Bosch's potion, you want to use Traveler on the same Rook, D. Now check your steps, alright? We have five steps to burn before we're good. So once the potion lands, we ATB reset Bosch. It would take him a few seconds to be done with that high potion, so we're going to remove his sword to ATB reset, and now he'll be casting Traveler. Right? He'll be casting Traveler. We run in circles until we're above 172, so Traveler is ready, and now we go. 6-6-6, six, 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 boom, boom. Alright, all the rooks are dead. Dr. Sid has been hit by 10,000 damage, and if you look, attack, you see protect, regen, nothing. So he does not have shell. So this was a perfect start to the fight. Everything is good. So, now we just stand still and let Reflect hit him. You need to ATB reset one time in the fight, just to be safe. Although, given the timing, I don't think it's actually going to be needed. Just do it to be safe. As the ATB reset, you can remove their weapons if you want. That's good enough. And the fight's done. So this is this was basically a perfect Sid one. That's how the fight is supposed to look. So what can happen is in the first stage of the fight, um, in the first stage of the fight, let's see, load, save state three. Things can get a little bit weird. So let's say um, you don't get the targeting correct. So let's just say, let's just see what happens if I just move the girls up. If I got lucky or not. Alright, got lucky. He still got hit. Yeah, still, still fine. First up. Um, but, so what, what can happen is if all the, if all the bios don't hit the same rook, they might hit two different rooks. That kind of sucks. You just have to stand there and use high potions over and over again, and just basically hope that the reflected bios hit or kill one of the rooks, and then wait until that happens. You can run out of MP, and that can be a way you, you lose the run and die. It sucks, but it can happen. So, just hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, now, the other thing that can happen is let's do bio on, let's just do Dr. Sid. Black Magic bio, Dr. Sid, and Traveler, Dr. Sid. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Alright, so Shell landed on him. That's That was my goal. So now he has Shell. Protect Shell region. That's why you target Rook D. Rook D was the one casting Shell, and we didn't kill it in time before Shell this time. So one nice thing about using Oil on Mateus is now Pinello has Dispel. 
And so Dispel you can use to remove Shell. So let's do that. Alright, let it go. Right when you see, you hear that ksh, and you see the, the things move away from him, you need to ATB reset the girls. And now you want to ATB reset all the bio casts this time. So, bio, bio. So, hit, hit. Hit, hit. Hit, hit. Alright. And you want to try and guide him towards the girls. Doesn't look like I'm going to get it, but I'm going to try anyway. Alright, I actually got it. Yeah, see? If you do it that way, you should have enough time to get all of these bios in. So, turn off the gambits. And you still got it. So, that, that's Tokamakless. Um, even if he gets Shell, if you ATB reset after every single cast, you should have enough time to kill him before Tokamak. Now, one more time, I'm going to show this and show you what happens when you get Tokamak. Yeah, also, instead of, instead of guiding Sid, you can move the girls. Um, Reflect only has so much range. So let's actually try and do something weird. Let's just try and be like this. So we got lucky and we got it again. Yeah, so we've been getting pretty lucky with the but like you might not hit all the you might not hit the first rook the first time. My potion. Black magic bio. D. Actually, let's do let's do it wrong. So black magic bio. Boom! 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 All right, he got hit by shell. Well, let's not dispel. Let's mess it up. Oh, perfect. Now I missed some reflects, too. So he's taking less damage now because he is... still he has shell. So that sucks. We're not going to kill him before. So we ATB reset. And we want to swap out the... Oh, I messed up. Okay, so he's gonna. Well, let's let's just recover, and I'll show, and then I'll load the save. This is Tokamak. This happens if you don't land a dispel, or you miss too many reflects, um, or something goes wrong. So the key point here is that when there's no more rooks, he only targets the person who's closest. Oh, I only have one high potion. This might not be possible. Well, let's just let's just continue. So, I'll just I'll just sort of talk about what what you do. It's not going to be I don't enough high potions to make it work, but what you can do is well, Bosch wants to high potion himself to keep himself alive, and you can have others use Phoenix Downs on the girls. Oh yeah, so we're, we're fucked, but... But you would bring back the girls, and he only targets the one that's closest. And that would be the trick to recovering in this fight. Like, he'll target Fran, because Fran is closest. And then he'll target Balthier, if I move like this. Right. So, so that's how you recover, is you, you put Bosch closest to Sid, and then leave the girls behind him, and constantly use X-Potions while recovering, while having the girls attack themselves, to be back into critical, reflect, and then reflect bios at him. That's all there is to recovering in the fight. Let's go back to our save now. But it really is much easier if you can dispel him, or if you kill Rook C or D first and don't have Shell. Because skipping Tokamak is really a huge, huge important thing. It saves a lot of time and a lot of headache. So I think this will conclude um, this section of the tutorial. And uh, so next up, we'll do Reflacia up to Shemazai. So I'm going to stop recording.